When disaster strikes and humans can't come to the rescue, who will? Perhaps someday, robots. Twenty-four teams from around the world gathered in Pomona, California to perform what seems like menial tasks. Driving a car, turning on a light switch, climbing a set of stairs. Each robot has exactly one hour to gain as many points as possible by completing as many tasks as possible. The setting for the contest is uh, supposed to be mimicking something that might happen inside of a degraded building, so an environment that's designed for humans but has been degraded in some way. What we'd expect to do in a disaster scenario is come in with a robot, get the robot into the, into the building that, in question, see what's in there. The people that are involved are now going to need to figure out what to do. The robot, it's teleoperated, but it's through a wireless communication. So as the robot goes into the building, those communications are going to get more and more intermittent, more and more noisy. So the robot's not fully autonomous, but it has to be autonomous enough that it can deal with delays between an operator sending commands and the robot receiving them. You might expect that the humanoid robots would perform these tasks best, but that wasn't always the case. Sometimes they were a little top-heavy and they toppled over. So what I saw were a number of robots that instead could convert from walking to wheels and then rolling. The more versatile a robot, the better it did in the competition. RoboSimian's particular design attributes is that it's inspired by things like monkeys and apes that have a more generalized uh, body plan and capability. In particular, uh, it has limbs that can be used for as either arms or legs, not just one or the other. And that gives it the ability to move around in, in much more complex environments with equivalent ease. On day one of the competition, the robot teams were particularly careful. What was most evident is how long they took to finish any one task. There was a lot of work to see the environment through sensors, to get code, to get instructions from the teams managing them in the garage. And then there were times when they simply couldn't perform the task. The hardest things for robots right now are really dealing with day-to-day -day environments where things are just a little bit different every time you come up to them. But with each passing day, they moved more quickly, took more risks, and by the final day, robots were falling all over the place because they were going faster, they were trying to do things more quickly, and they were also trying to do things that maybe they hadn't done the day before. The things that are really complicated or difficult for robots to do at the moment is actually relatively trivial. A lot of robotics has really come a long way in recent years, um, but there's still a lot further that we need to go. Just being able to walk around in a house um, where you've got clutter underneath that you might trip on. These are things that humans do really easily, and that's why we want to make sure that the human operators are the ones doing that, because they're the fastest at it. In the end, it was Team Keist and the robot, Kubo, who won the $2 million prize. To understand the importance of this event, you have to look back about 10 years to the last big DARPA Grand Challenge, when they showed the world that these scientists could build self-driving cars. Fast forward to this competition. You won't see rescue robots this year, next year, but 10 years from now, they may re-emerge in times of need. I hope people are impressed by the Dark Robotics Challenge when they're watching it. I hope they're also asking themselves, especially uh, college students and, and uh, kids, you know, why aren't we doing better than this? And, you know, I hope that really does inspire people to, to be the ones who do push us there. You know, when I get older, I want a robot in my home. And, and uh, you know, if I'm not the one that develops it, I hope somebody out there who's watching is.